Our solar system's whole history has been witnessed by the sun. It has witnessed the formation of both our moon and planet. It contains proof of the emergence and extinction of large species. Kingdoms have risen, empires have fallen, and new nations have been added to the world map. In the grand scheme of things, the sun is the only witness to the beginning of life on Earth, and it will still be there after our time is up, watching our planet burn to ash. But before that happens, scientists have noticed strange flares emanating from the sun and NASA warns that a giant flare may soon occur which might put our planet in harm's way. What could be the cause of these flares? Is there any way to prevent them from damaging the Earth? And could extraterrestrial life have something to do with these strange emissions from our star? Keep watching this video till the end to find out. The Sun has been very active lately, which could cause a few problems for us here on Earth, according to NASA. While the solar cycle is not yet at its peak, the space agency said that its activity has already surpassed predictions. Solar flares and eruptions will likely increase from now until 2025 as we reach solar maximum, writes Nicola Fox, the director of NASA's Heliophysics Division. During the Sun's natural 11-year cycle, the Sun shifts from relatively calm to stormy, then back again. At its most active, called Solar Maximum, the Sun is freckled with sunspots and its magnetic poles reverse. That sort of solar activity has impacts here on Earth. Just before noon on September 1, 1859, two English amateur astronomers, Richard Christopher Carrington and Richard Hodgson, independently recorded the earliest observations of a solar flare. Because of a geomagnetic solar flare effect observed in the Q Observatory magnetometer and a geomagnetic storm observed the following day, Carrington suspected a solar terrestrial interaction to occur soon, and he was right. On September 2nd, 1859, one of the largest geomagnetic storms as recorded by ground-based magnetometers occurred an X-level geomagnetic storm that is 10 times stronger than anything we have experienced so far, perhaps until now. 163 years later, we are now faced with another X-level solar flare. Strong solar flares, which are basically intense bursts of radiation, could also create health risks for astronauts, issues for spacecraft, and potentially create concerns about the health of flight crews and passengers on airplanes. The Carrington event, as it came to be known, was the most intense geomagnetic storm in recorded history, peaking from the 1st to the 2nd of September, 1859, during Solar Cycle 10. It created stronger rural displays that were reported globally and caused sparking and even fires in multiple telegraph stations. The geomagnetic storm was most likely the result of a coronal mass ejection from the Sun colliding with Earth's magnetosphere. The Carrington event took place a few months before the solar maximum, a period of elevated solar activity of solar cycle 10. A geomagnetic storm of this magnitude occurring today would cause widespread electrical disruptions, blackouts, and damage due to extended outages of the electrical power grid. On October 2, 2022, the sun emitted a strong solar flare. NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory, which watches the sun constantly, captured an image of the event. This flare was found to be an X1 flare, one of the most intense flares. Once again, 163 years later, we are heading towards the solar maximum, a time when solar flares are at their most frequent, strong, and potentially catastrophic if they hit Earth. But even before we get there, the last few months have exceeded predictions of the sun's hot wrath and occasionally SpaceX satellites have been falling out of the sky as a result. As we become increasingly reliant on technology and satellites which are less protected from solar activity, such events could be even more troubling. The X1 solar flare might have disrupted the Hurricane Ian disaster response. The radio blackout classed by NOAA's R3 likely affected rescue workers using 25 megahertz radios to communicate. The disruption in the upper layers of Earth's atmosphere caused by the flare may also have disrupted some GPS positioning. A somewhat milder flare followed a few hours later causing another radio blackout over the western Pacific and Australia. 
Both flares originated from a sunspot, a darkened area of intense magnetic activity on the sun's surface. The sunspot called AR-3110 in the northwestern part of the sun's visible disk was accompanied by a coronal mass ejection, which is a burst of magnetized particles from the sun's upper atmosphere, the corona. The two plasma clouds may now be heading to Earth following a couple of earlier CMEs that exploded from the sun earlier. Simultaneously, a stronger-than-usual solar wind, a stream of charged particles constantly emanating from the sun, is currently blowing toward our planet from a coronal hole and opening in the magnetic field of the sun. The combination means that the CMEs may trigger a noticeable geomagnetic storm on Earth in the coming days. In August 2022, satellites detected an explosion on the sun and a long-lasting eruption of a C9.3 class solar flare. NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory saw debris flying away from the blast site, although Earth is not in the line of fire. The explosion is significant because it may herald an active region set to emerge over the sun's northeastern limb. While we likely see more solar flares and resulting complications as we approach 2025, there's no need to fear a doomsday scenario. Some people worry that a gigantic killer solar flare could hurl enough energy to destroy Earth, but this it's not actually possible, NASA clarified in a statement, plus solar cycles repeat every 11 years. That means anyone over the age of 11 has already lived through a solar maximum and probably didn't notice its occurrence. The main question and theory that scientists have begun to ponder, though, is could extraterrestrial life be the true cause of these weird solar flares? Although we might not be certain until proven correctly, scientists have begun deeper investigations as they believe aliens might be the true perpetrators of these emissions from our solar system star. It is well known among scientists and astronomers around the world that although all stars have solar flares from time to time, red dwarfs in particular produce the most massive solar flares. This is important to note because our sun is a yellow dwarf star producing solar flares that rival some red dwarfs in our galaxy. What could be the cause? Well, scientists have begun to speculate that alien experiments on our star could be the primary cause of these intense solar flares. Other than the theory that aliens have long used our planet to carry out studies and experiments, new theories have begun circulating that they use other planets in our solar system and our sun too as an experimental field. This is, however, merely speculation, but it could be interesting to think that aliens use stars as a field to test their weapons, just like how we humans tend to test our nuclear weapons out at sea and the flares could just be the byproducts of the explosion caused by their weapons. Even though the sun is at the center of our solar system, it nevertheless hides many secrets from science. Uncovering these riddles could provide insight into mysterious activities observed in other stars and potentially provide us with priceless information. It is our curiosity which has led us to send numerous missions to understand the dynamics of one of the largest stars in the universe. The Solar Orbiter spacecraft is our attempt to get to know the Sun a little better. This spacecraft is a satellite jointly developed by the European Space Agency and NASA to observe the Sun. It is designed to procure detailed measurements of the sun's heliosphere and also observe its polar regions. On most days, our generally placid sun goes about its job providing a consistent and predictable quantity of heat and light to keep our planet and its inhabitants alive, but as we enter the 25th solar cycle, things will get hotter. Just as the sun is responsible for weather on Earth, solar activity can also be responsible for disturbances in our space environment and atmosphere.